At one point in this episode, Corey says, I almost killed a girl that I love, and I don't know why. Really, Corey? <laughs> you love Rachel? You've spent enough time with her, created a bond with her strong enough to have a familial love for her and appreciation for her? When the hell did this happen? <laughs> what? I've seen no characterization along these lines in this series. <laughs> Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 10 of the DC Universe Titans series entitled Coriander, which, <laughs> by the title alone, suggests we're going to get to know that much more about this series version of Starfire, Coriander's, as she's been known. And we do find a little bit. She has a spaceship. Huzzah. Um, and, and her memories are coming back, and... I was I was once again sort of flummoxed, you know, uh, much as I was in the very early going of last week's episode, Hank and Dawn, when we had taken yet another aside, a complete left turn, and not picked up immediately with the cliffhanger that we left off with, with, you know, Corey coming, coming back to her senses, but that equating to having to murder Rachel on the spot. You know, she starts choking her. And, and Rachel is screaming, and then boom, the cliffhanger ending. And, and we waited a week, and we didn't pick up with that. And so now, once again with this episode, it, it is meandering at the start. You know, the whole episode kind of feels like the old adage to me, if you don't have anything nice to say, maybe you don't say anything at all. Um, and, and this episode, a lot of what happened in it, I don't want to say it was uneventful, because it was eventful, things happened. Um, but it was uninvesting to me and unexciting to me and just kind of going through the motions of, of predictability. Uh, everything that I had, had figured at this point was going to happen, it just took them forever to get to those beats, point by point by point. Uh, again, starting the episode and, and, you know, of course we're reminded previously on Titans, this is what happened, you know, two weeks ago now. Uh, this this tantamount, incredibly, incredibly uh, uh, emergency-laden situation where we have to stop Starfire. She's going to kill Rachel. You know, oh, good, make us wait two weeks and then, and then draw us into the episode that's actually continuing the story by meandering around and explaining how Rachel had the vision that she did that allowed her to be the through line in the Hank and Dawn episode to try to communicate with them and ask them for help and all this kind of stuff. Um... It just, it, it took forever to get going, and with something that was so tension-filled and, and so palpable two weeks ago with that with that cliffhanger ending of Corey attacking Rachel, I mean, holy shit, it took them forever to get to it. You know, finally, Dick and Donna come rushing through the door as if they were only just right down the road the entire time. They've been in the area, they just happened to get there in time, uh, and, and come in right at that most you know, necessary moment to stop Corey. Uh, of course, Dick runs up to her and gets thrown like a rag doll. Subsequently, he and Gar both get thrown like rag dolls, uh, Dick into Gar. And then uh, it's up to Donna using the lasso to literally rein Corey in. And, and of course, Rachel is traumatized. Her mother is, like, holding her. And uh, it, it was just like, well, finally, finally we caught up with where we left off two freaking weeks ago. <laughs> I mean... Oh, don't make me wait any longer than that, folks. Come on. Uh, with something this primped up, with something this intense, and you're going to make us wait two full weeks? And then, to top it off, you're going to meander a few minutes before you get to it in the episode. And uh, then once that was said and done, Corey goes on her merry way because she's trying to chase down whatever these flashback memories are that are, are leading her to some answers. Not all answers, but, uh, you know, I mean, she's still not very characteristic as Coriander from, from any comic or animated or other, you know, iteration uh, as we've seen before. So I'm just, I'm just sort of like watching this episode passively and I'm just, I'm not really engaged with it. Um, I'm like, you know, I've had a sense from the very beginning that Rachel's mom was probably not all she was cracked up to be. I didn't think she was, you know, a good stalwart mother as she was pretending to be. Um, and it was just a matter of time before the other leg dropped that somehow or other she'd be involved with Trigon and or, you know, have something to do with that. And uh, so, of course, when the other leg does finally drop in this episode, corresponding with uh, Gar's suddenly coughing up blood and seeing these, 
evil visions and everything like that. Um, it, it was all a bait and switch from the get-go, and it was just like, all right, I already saw this coming. Why is it taking so long to get there? I mean, it takes to the nth degree of this episode, flashing back and forth between, you know, Donna and Dick and Corey and what they're stumbling onto and, and realizing, and back and forth between that to, of course, Rachel, her mom, and Gar. And uh, I, I love how they they give a tip of the hat to Trigon in this sort of CG holographic uh, interface that's, you know, going on in Corey's ship with Dick and Don and everything as they're trying to figure it all out. And then finally, when, when you know, it comes time to, oh, if you want to save Gar, if you want to save your friend, as per, you know, Rachel's mother, call on your father. He'll be able to help him. He'll be able to save him and all this crap. And so what do we get? We get a through the looking glass uh, in a mirror darkly thing where, of course, what comes out is nothing like the the monster because of course they don't have the cg budget for that they they can barely animate gar turning from a human to a tiger and back again you know and everything like that um and weird looking car crashes from above and, and things like that um so of course he's got to come out as a guy in a suit and tie a la evil dead or something like that uh or ash versus evil dead as it were um and, and it was just, like, underwhelming, and just everything in this episode was passive and underwhelming to me, and unengaging to me. Um, and I just, I almost feel like I, I wish they had released this back-to-back -back with the finale episode, only that was before seeing the trailer for the finale episode. Holy hell, I could do a whole video on this by itself, because uh, apparently the season finale is episode 11, and it's going to be Robin versus Batman. Huzzah. Because, you know, I mean, I don't want to put any focus on the goddamn overarching plot of the series to do with Rachel and Trigon and all of that shit. No, let's let's spend a whole other episode, the finale episode, I might add, inside Dick's mind as he's being mind-fucked by Trigon. I guarantee you that's what's happening. That's why we see, uh, you know, uh, Anna Diop, who, who plays Corey as, like, you know, this, this representative who's communicating with Dick about how bad Batman has gotten. That's why we see Jason Todd in a wheelchair and all this crap, and Batman's gonna kill the Joker and yada, yada, yada. Oh, good, let's have another... Oh, no, it wasn't good enough to have the Asylum episode where we had Dick fighting internally his, his younger self, uh, very literally, you know, the, the concept of becoming Robin itself manifest in his mind while he was under sedation and all that kind of stuff. No, let's now have a whole episode that finally rounds out the series that has nothing to do with the overarching plot with Rachel and Trigon and everything like that. It's just going to be a mind fuck as created by Trigon to mess with Dick and, and to try to get viewers in and get people excited that holy shit, Batman's going to be involved, man. Holy shit, Batman's going to be in the finale. It's going to have nothing to do with everything we watched to this point, but it's Batman. Of course, it's going to get people excited. It's, it's going to get people orgasming in their in their beds and, and their parents' basement and whatever like that because goddamn, it's the goddamn Batman. <sighs> So the finale will have nothing to do with any of the overarching plot I have even the mildest interest in, which I've had to fight uphill in the snow both ways to keep attuned to and engaged with. No, we're going to have an episode mind fuck in the mind of Dick Grayson having to battle Batman because fuck it. Why focus on, on the battle with Trigon? Oh, I guess that's going to be like season two, right? I mean, he's in human form. He's not that much of a threat visibly. He's not the giant, you know, creature monster that he should be. He's just he's just a dude in a suit jacket, man. Oh, come on. He, he's dark. He, he's going to bring about the end of the world. But he's not visibly a threat. He's not doomsday, you know? I, I mean, come on. So, yeah, let's, let's shoehorn Batman in because why the fuck not? Has anyone been watching this show? Has anyone been engaged with it? Does anyone care about the plot of what's going on with Rachel? If I had even a mild care or concern, which is about all I've got, it's just frustrating the ever-loving hell out of me that they can't stay focused on the fucking plot. You want me to care about Corey, and you want me to care about Gar, and you want me to care about Dick, and you want me to care about Rachel, but you keep going far and away, away from them, as far as trying to give them growth and characterization and making them come together as a unit so that I, as a viewer, will give two shits about them. 
I care more about Hank and Dawn. I care more about Jason Todd. I care more about Donna Troy and the Doom Patrol because they were more well-written, more well-rounded, better characterization than even the main characters of this fucking show, who I'm now supposed to believe just because Corey says, I love her, but I almost killed her and I don't know why. She hasn't spent enough time with her to fall in love with her. But then maybe I'm just being overly pessimistic and overly negative, and maybe it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And uh, so otherwise, I'd love to hear from you guys what you thought about this episode, love it or hate it. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. Tell me you agree. Tell me you disagree. I don't care as long as you're respectable and respectful of other people's opinions. And uh, if you happen to like this video and like to support my channel, I'd love it if you would take a look at my PayPal contribution link posted both in the description as well as the comments below where you can explore options very much akin to Patreon, setting up a monthly contribution, a one-time only kind of thing, or send me a personal message along with a contribution which can request topics I may discuss in the future, as well as request shout-outs and things of that nature. And uh, anything you saw fit to send my way would be two thumbs up for me, as it would be a direct line to keeping up my longevity on YouTube. And uh, I can only hope that you decide <laughs> to help me out in some way, shape, or form. And uh, so, yeah, with that, otherwise I'll be, well, anticipating the finale episode of this series in any case, uh, or this season in any case, not necessarily looking forward to it. And until then, I'll catch you later. Peace.